Okay, guys. Uh, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, solar people. I'm Solar Rens, your solar guy, living in the beautiful country, the Philippines. As you can see, we have now the continuation of a product review of the SRNE. This is a high voltage series, a 5.5 kilowatts. And of course, this is a 48 volts uh, system. I have already mentioned a lot of uh, details as to the parameters, specification of this uh, inverter. What I'm going to show you is the installation, of course, that is number one. And uh, number two, the uh, testing. So we will be doing the load testing and finally the parameter settings. First, I'm going to make uh, connections of the AC line here and the AC out. So line neutral and ground. We will connect some grounds. And of course, the battery. We will be using the 48 volts battery and the PB. So PB cable. And uh, we have here the circuit breaker, the DC MCB or the miniature circuit breaker. And this one is for the AC, which is the AC input. And that will come from the distribution utility. This one is for the DC search protection device. And this one is for the AC search protection device. And I'll be using um, some indicators. Okay, this is the over and under voltage protection. And this will be used in the AC out of this inverter. And we will be connecting to this uh, circuit breaker, DC MCB. Okay, so of course, uh, before we connect the battery terminal or battery cables, we have to run it through this DC MCCB. This is a hybrid of grid inverter. Okay. Okay, guys. So I'm almost done, except for this uh, battery connection. Anyway, this one is a non-polarized uh, DC MCCB or battery circuit breaker, so that uh, the charge and discharge may pass through. So, whichever direction it may uh, take, and uh, it will not have any problem. And unlike those uh, DC MCB, since those are only miniature, so there's a rule to follow, which uh, the connection should uh, follow the source. Since inverter follow the battery, which is the source, then the connection should be on top of the DC miniature circuit breaker. But this one, as I've said, this one is a non-polarized, so we can tap the battery cable here for charge and discharge. So I just uh, put the color coding of the AC wires, and this one is for the ground. Red for the line, yellow for the neutral, and uh, green for the ground. So it's all connected here. And uh, it's already tapped on the ground bar or ground red. So in here, this is the circuit breaker for the PB cable, which as I explained, uh, 22 amperes is the maximum amperage current. Okay, so it's now connected here the PB terminal and uh, it is parallel with DC SPD so it is now connected with the uh, solar panels PB input range is between 120 to 450 volts based on the maximum input power of uh, 6000 watts so this one is for the AC input as uh, connected here so it came from uh, this uh, inlet of the ECMCB and uh, connected in parallel with the AC surge protective uh, device. And the uh, lines that came out from the AC MCB yeah, is connected here at the AC input terminal. And our uh, AC output here. So line, neutral, and ground. It is uh, connected to the ACMCB, this is the inlet 
portion of the AC miniature circuit breaker and uh, it came out here uh, you can see it was interchangeably connected because the position of the neutral is at the left side while the line position is on the right side so it was interchangeably connected and the output of this over voltage and under voltage uh, protection device will be connected to the final load so i'll be going to install the the outlet here so that uh, we could uh, power up the appliances that we're using in testing this uh, srn uh, inverter so i may install another uh, watt meter or multi-purpose meter okay one for the output of the ac out so connected with a multi-purpose meter so that we can see the amperage we can see the wattage of course the voltage so let me just uh, do some installation here including the battery okay guys so it is now completely connected this is now the battery cable connected here dc mccb start the battery so it has 52.51 volts panels are also connected so i have six pieces of uh, solar panels and we will check the pb input voltage so positive negative there 200 it's 275 or 276 volts dc and uh, it is now ready to power up we'll start with the battery okay there dc switch okay there it is now initializing battery is 52.4 voltage is uh, 230 volts ac that is now the alternating current Next that we're going to switch up is the circuit breaker for the PB input. So this one, there's a 274 volts coming in. This is the AC output. There is a 230 volts, but no consumption yet. I'm gonna switch up the circuit breaker for the load side and there. Okay, it's now running 63 or 62 watts, 61.3, 61.2 watts. I have the electric fan running. And then we will switch up also the AC input, the grid side, okay, this one. The idle power as shown here is 2.75 using AC. Now we will do the load testing. We will try to load as high as uh, 6 kilowatt. We will be using appliances which combined the wattage of these appliances are more than uh, the power of this inverter. So this inverter has only 5,500 watts capacity. I have here the air fryer. I have here the, the oven. I have here also the electric uh, stove and this uh, heat gun. So this heat gun has uh, 2000 watts uh, rated power. So let's see the watt uh, meter, how much it, it can uh, draw from the inverter. Just look at this uh, wattage. Okay, burner number one, there. 944 it's already on burner number two let's see 1.87 so we will try the air fryer okay so we will do the 160 degrees okay 1.44 kilowatts next is the oven so zero in the medium range and do this one kilowatt 1.2 1.1 so that's the mid high 1.2 kilowatts so let's do it okay first the air fryer so i'll put it in uh, 160 degrees 
yeah, 160 degrees and for five minutes running 1.44 next is the oven okay i'll just put in a mid okay five minutes running 1.7 2.7 already okay next this electric stove there 3.5 okay another uh, burner for electric stove 4.7 so i'll try this uh, median 5.30 5.3 kilowatts there 6.2 wow impressive 5.8 5.8 watts it's more than capacity 6.9 <laughs> it's more than 6,000 the only rate of this inverter is 5.5 wow super 5.6 6.7 Okay, so let's do the parameter settings so this icon represents the menu or enter and exit settings and this one is a page number or option increase key and this one is for confirmation whatever changes uh, we've made or settings we've done it is uh, required to press this uh, icon so that uh, everything uh, being set is validated enter key or ok option key this one indicates the distribution utility and uh, this one is a generator we can connect ac line input to the generator and also mainly to the main power which is the grid or the distribution utility this one indicates that the solar panel is uh, working so this is a symbol of a solar panel this is the symbol of the battery we can choose whatever uh, batteries it may be set but uh, as of this time we are using the lipo 4 or the lithium iron phosphate so this one indicates the load side or the consumption uh, the center indicates that the inverter is working as you can see there is an icon for the ac and there is an icon for the dc it's a setting icon and you want to go to other parameters just uh, press the increase options key we have to check the supply priority mode so one is for the supply priority mode so this time i choose the pb first so if you want to to change priority just uh, press the confirm icon or the check icon as we can see it's now uh, blinking indicating that uh, we are now ready to change the parameter so there are three battery first pb first or ac first so if we choose the battery first the mode is inverter mode the inverter will uh, switch only to the distribution utility when the battery is under voltage unlike with the PV priority so it is a solar first mode the only time that the main power will uh, come into play when the PV uh, is insufficient for now we will be using the PV first so another uh, parameter is the frequency for the Hertz so we need to change this one because in the Philippines we are using 60 Hertz and change this to 60 Hertz and confirm so there so it's now uh, okay to use the 60 hertz another is the input voltage so this one apl has a range of 90 volts ac to 280 volts ac so if the supply from the distribution utility is uh, fluctuating meaning there's a low voltage and high voltage uh, event it's better to use the apl because uh the, the range is 90 volts to to 80 at least uh, 
the requirements of the inverter is uh, within the range. If we use the UPS, this is different because the input power or input voltage from the distribution utility is uh, within 170 to 280 volts. So still we will be using the safe zone voltage or the APL. Okay, number four. In here, the battery voltage is lower than the set value. So the output is switched from inverter to the distribution utility if uh, the voltage of the battery becomes lower than 43.6. Okay, another parameter is the charging mode. So this one is a hybrid, hybrid charging. So in hybrid charging, the PV or the photovoltaic system, when there is a sufficient power from the solar panels, then the utility will stop. So let's check. So it is now on the hybrid uh, charging mode. Let's check. So as you can see, now there is a power from the solar panels which um, charges the battery and uh, of course uh, giving some uh, loads. So let's check the wattage that being harvested. So one kilo, there's a 0.1 kilowatts. As you can see, there is a 61 watts being consumed so there's a harvest of 200 watts and uh, zero from the distribution utility because uh, in hybrid system the priority is the solar panel so it will come into play if uh, pb energy is insufficient so let's try to switch off the pb circuit breaker there's a bypass energy from the grid or that uh, supplies the home load. I will uh, switch up the PB circuit breaker and we'll check if the bypass will cut off and the PB priority will uh, stay. Okay, there. So, in hybrid charging mode, PB is always the priority. Parameter 7 is the maximum uh, charging current. So the default settings for the charging current is uh, 60 amperes, but we can do as high as 100. The maximum ampere is 100. So I'll just uh, do it at uh, 60. So this one is the parameter for the battery. We can choose SLD or sealed lead acid, FLD or flooded lead acid, gel type battery. But uh, since we are using the LIFO4, which is a 16 series, so we need to confirm the LFP16. There are many parameters with this uh, inverter, but I need to move to number 23 parameter. This is actually the automatic overload protection parameter. As you can see, this is the disable mode. So we have to change this from disable to enable. Okay. There. So in relation to parameter number 23, Let's check the parameter number 27 because in number 27, this is the inverter overload bypass. Meaning, if there is an overload occurrence, the consumption will directly outsource from the distribution utility, not anymore on the side of this uh, inverter. Uh, parameter number 54 shows the the year, month, and date. So we have to change year 2023. And then month of February. And then date today. 
February 12, almost Valentine's Day. So we have to confirm by pressing the check icon. So it's already set. Next is the parameter number 55, hour, minute, and seconds. The time is uh, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. So 14, 26, or 2, 26 in the afternoon. Confirm. So another important parameter that we need to set is the leakage protection. So the leakage protection is parameter number 56. We just need to enable this one. Okay, there. So that's it. As you can see, there is an input voltage from the distribution utility, but uh, the power is coming from the solar panels. Okay, that's it for now. If you want this product, I'll put the link in the description box for Alibaba link. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.